Hello and welcome back to the channel. So we're going to have a quick review here of the Stug F8, Stug Free Orfs F8 late production, which is a new release from Tacom on their Blitz range. And as you can see, I got this for $37.99. I bought this direct from uh, Jadlam Models in the UK. Open on a Sunday, so I drove up there as we were going somewhere and nipped in and grabbed it. So it's uh, pretty much brand new as far as I know, as far as release has been out about a week at this point. So let's have a look inside the box, see what we get, see what we're looking at, see what sort of kit we're dealing with. So as I said, there we go. Um, we got Jadlum. Uh, I like to. I'm very lucky where I live. Uh, I got about three to four very good model shops, all within an hour away. Um, it just happened that Jadlum was open on a Sunday, so. Uh, and I was going that way, so we went there first. But it's um, it's very nice to have the amount of uh, shops I've got locally, and um, I do try and utilise them when I can. No bad thing. Maybe I shouldn't buy so many kits. Do excuse. A uh, bit unusual. I've got black gloves on. We'll have to get over it. I'm working the ground at the nursery at the minute, so um, very hard to uh, keep the hands clean for videos. So, what we've got you may have seen there is quite a lot of interesting parts now what I like about these sorts of armor kits at the minute which is why I'm highlighting this for $37.99 I was talking to a friend about this we've got Lincoln length winter Ostketten winter Ketten tracks we've got a metal gun barrel photo etch copper wire for the tow cables I mean you know five years ago you would have had to pay nearly a hundred quid to get all of this um, to a kit form you would have taken the dragon kit and then you would have added bits to it and on it goes so uh, we are living in a great time to be getting models like this released so uh, I I'm very happy with it now I haven't built a German kit this year I realized um, certainly not you might have seen something on the channel but I haven't built it this year if I have done it and that's no bad thing um, I like doing the allied armor but uh, I you know I'm gonna I'm gonna be doing something German soon and um, well we'll be going full on when we do do it uh, so what we got here is smallish I don't even know what size this would be but it's it's uh, noticeably small we'll say that and it's um, side opening I will actually say in some parts it's almost a little bit too condensed but, I mean, I can see, and, you know, I suppose you can put glasses on and you'd be able to see if you do struggle with things. But, I mean, it is a little bit small with, if we take, like, the, the tracks, for instance. I mean, I'm used to this being a little bit bigger. When you see the size of my hand here, that's, you know, even I need to be looking like this a, a bit. Sort of scanning in, thinking, right, okay, how many links around there? How many links? But, you know, you can do it, so uh, we shouldn't criticise it. And I suppose if we really wanted to, we could blow it up on um, uh, on a photocopier. But I think it's worth pointing out that it is surprisingly small, the instructions. I mean, when we get to the painting, you know, my hand goes over two of the um, paint guides. So there's not a lot to see there, I've got to be honest. But, anyway, let's look at the uh, breakdown parts. So we've got, this is the most generic sprue, the oldest one, I think, the A. This is an all Stug G's and all the way through. And then we've got a few different, um, the fact it doesn't go then A, B, C, D, E. I'm not totally sure, but I'm guessing that we're dealing with, we've got sprue M, N, and F. I'm imagining these are the majority of the stuff because this is an F and they haven't done an F before, we've done a G. And my understanding, and I do not know a lot about Stugs, is that the F is a different um, upper structure, upper hole, superstructure, than the G. That's, uh, that's what I'm going to say, and I'm sure there's going to be plenty of people that can correct me in the comments. I did uh, have a brief conversation with um, Evan at Panzermeister just to check is there any glaring issues and he seemed to think the kit was okay so that's um, that's good enough for me. Now as we go through this is meant to be simplified it's not actually there's plenty going on I think but we've got a full hole um, lower hole tub so this is all one piece we've got the front and back there's nothing really to add other than the swing arms and they're in a fixed position. Once you've got that done a couple of the um, suspension units for the front and rear uh, torsion bars and then we've got the housings for the sprocket there 
and then we're straight on to the wheels and it's as simple as glue two wheels together and stick them on apologies so it's very shiny paper and then we've got the um, return rollers as well going on uh, we've got the idler and the sprocket now there is a point, we'll have a look in a minute when we look at the sprues, um, Panzermeister36 has done a very good video on uh, how to just work your way through some of the building parts of the Stug 3G um, in the Blitz, which this is using the same sprue and it relates to the wheels, the pins in the middle are actually a bit too long and they foul the two mating surfaces, he's got a good explanation of how to cut that away, so if you want to see a bit more of that, if you look at his uh, post build review for the Stug 3G, um, you will see all of that information. So we go on through, we're putting the exhaust on and then I'm guessing we're pretty much sorted and we're starting to put bits of the superstructure on. We've got the first bit of photo etch which is uh, this large grille here which is going to go underneath there and then the uh, back plate goes on, all of that sort of housing which is allowing for the air vents coming out. Again there's information on Panzermeister's video on how to go about doing this because the way it's described um, is somewhat tricky, shall we say, and there are there is a better way to do it. Then we go on and put the tracks on, so we've got two different sides. There we go. So we've got E1, E3, E2, E4. So that's the, the what would we be looking at, the left-hand side and then the right-hand side, and that's how it's um, set out. So you want to pay attention to that, because I imagine the sag is different because the return rollers are have got different gaps, both sides, so then the sag is different. Uh, like I said, we've got winter ketten here, so we've got the extenders for the um, for snow, you know, spreading the weight across the snow, making the track wider. And then we carry on with the side fenders going on here, and then we've got the superstructure, the main part. Again, you see how they're simplified, you know, it's just glue sort of five, six bits on and you're done. Glue another five, six bits and you're done. Move on around here. It's sort of, you know, lacking in moving parts, which I'm, I'm not sad about. And then all this comes together into one section as like an upper hole. The side fenders, the rear and the superstructure will be glued together. Just glancing at that, I would think to myself, maybe, you know, before you commit to glue in this section, make sure it actually fits. Then we go around the tracks. Uh, last few parts going on here with a bit more photo etch grills. Uh, the actual uh, rear mud guards and the front mud guards. Then we've got the gun. So we've got a metal barrel, as we can see here is ideal just what we want uh, and we've got a slide molded or one piece sorry I don't know if it's slide molded uh, muzzle brake with then just the end section going on which means then we don't get a seam anywhere where there shouldn't be it's it's a natural seam uh, and then the gun goes into somewhat of a breach it's not meant to be a breach it's just the fixing point a uh, bit of spare track the last very intricate piece of um, photo work that we got here which is a rain, uh, no it's not a rain cut, it's not going to stop the rain is it? It's uh, going to stop debris going in, I think this is where the um, sight, uh, the, the optics are for the gun, so for the gun aiming, comes out here, and then that is the roof of the superstructure, and then we've got a mounted machine gun and a gun shield as well, I just need to check, I'm guessing this had a gun shield. For some reason I've got a feeling it didn't, but anyway, it's in there, so th that's fine. And then we've got four marking options. Uh, one thing just to note, this does tend to happen, I don't know who's actually doing these, they're, they're based around MIGS paint. Uh, I've seen this on border models as well with another uh, kit, that it you, you get typos. So I think they're, um, the border models FW190 has come out as a Messerschmitt FW190 and here we've got a Stug Free Offs, uh, Offs F8 sorry, and it's the early production that I'm assured does not relate to the actual schemes it's just a typo on early because this is the late production so just something to point out if you see it and you think oh it's all wrong because it's all showing the winter ketten and, and everything's fine so um, I'm imagining these are all vehicles that we would uh, be depicting this vehicle as and I'm going to use this as a winter whitewash um, I've wanted to do a winter whitewash so I'm going to use this video this vehicle to do it so we've got a little bit of photo etch here, um, this being the most intricate, and we have got a former in plastic that we can put this around, so it shouldn't be too difficult, although it does look daunting. Then we've got the section that this joins to, 
and then we've just got grills so we've got the main well i say grills it's uh mesh we've got the main mesh here going on the which goes in the back and then these two portions go on the side rear so there and on the other side and that's about it a couple small sections here as well just for holding the tow rope we've got copper wire for the tow towing rope which is ideal because you can bend it it's soft it's supple malleable and you can um, you, it doesn't tend to split on hard bends as you can see it just goes round whereas if where you use a hard wire it doesn't like to bend it usually frays at that point so that's the issue you tend to have to spend a fair bit of money to get copper wire twisted like this i mean you can do it yourself but if you buy the eureka cables you know it's sort of five pounds a go so we don't need to worry about that we've got metal gun barrel you can't really speak highly enough of a metal gun barrel and the everyone keeps saying to me i should say decals it's not decals it's decals so from now on i'm going to continue to say decals so here we are we've got blitz 2023 it's actually i thought that was a date it's not a date um and uh, the carrier film looks pretty good as far as carrier film goes it looks very matte uh nice printing nothing out of register everything looks fine not use these uh, decals myself so can't say anything more than they look pretty good i thought i'd just use this moment to interject with something that um i thought would be of interest this is where uh the stug free has never really done very much for me hot shock horror um but the f8 for some strange reason has always had a little bit of a pull to me and it wasn't until i was flicking through this that i often do that i remembered why i don't know how many times i've looked through this book but uh, i i've often come back to this uh, particular build i mean i've had this since i was very very young and um, i've looked at it for an awfully long time and it's a stug off f8 which happens to be in quite a large section of this book where i was looking at doing winter camouflage i think it's almost a shame as well why well, is it I, things change and you could still make your models just like this but i do like the idea that this is it was painted this white uh, you've sprayed the running gear a different color but he's, he's painted it white and then dry brushed a gray oil over it to give the effect and i think i was only looking at it the other day and i thought well that is not um that is not bad it looks like um a, f a, a faded gray scheme um and it's in here there's the finished one a bit of snow on it i just think to do that reversed so doing it the wrong way around essentially so that's dry brushed oils over white acrylic rather than painting it gray and then shading the um white back but i would be doing it the sort of more modern way of um painting it gray and then hairspray chipping it back but i do think that you know there's something to be said about how good that looks and this is where i i realized that this was the same model because it's got that uh, housing there which is always you know as a sort of what was i sort of 11 12 year old looking at this it always perplexed me as to you know what these things were so it's nice now to have a model you know come full circle and have a brand new model out of the fa i know we had it from dragon they're difficult to get you know it's almost like they came and then they've gone again because it's sort of 60 70 quid which kind of eliminates the whole point of what makes these models interesting you know the fact that they're affordable uh so it's yes yeah, really nice really nice nostalgic i guess for me and here we are full circle so let's get back to the kit so i don't think we need to go blow by blow every single sprue as we go on through but it, it <laughs> did that rhyme uh, but we'll um we'll look at the sort of you know the high points if you like so these are the uh, winter kitten lincoln length tracks so this is the length which has got the molded in sag there across the return rollers and then the flat bit at the bottom now 
listen up, Tamiya. They've uh, managed to mould the holes for the hammer stolen, which is like this. I don't know what to say. it's like a. It's like a. Um, it's like a hook thing. It's not the right word. I, I know the word I'm thinking of, and I can't think of it. It's like um, a gals grouser, I suppose. If you think of it like that, it's like a a thing that goes in, which helps hit into the ice. And you also have cleats that go in these middle bits, which come on the kit. I'm not an expert on uh, Panzer threes and fours, but they had it, and that's what these holes are for. And often these are moulded over like a recess or not hollow. But these are just about hollow. With that, it does also make them look extremely thick. But we'll, you know, we'll go around that. We'll, we'll, we won't worry about that. There you can see, you can see my black glove coming through here. So that's what they are. So this just denotes the early track. It was a 36 centimetre track and then a 40 cent centimetre track. That's the width. These are the wider ones uh, seen from sort of late 41, 42-ish onwards. And then the slimmer ones that don't have the hammer stolen they were the earlier ones back into France so there we go uh, we have ejector pin marks on the inside so there's one there 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 and that's both sides however you are not going to see it on the top you will see it a little bit on the bottom in between the wheels my suggestion would be to once you've got the wheels on offer it up before painting and then if they're covered don't worry about it and if they're not just a li little dab of super glue go in there with a sanding stick and just rub it back like that because they are recessed that's often the best way I can do it um, you know it's like a, a little blob of super glue it's just sort of raised like that makes a little bump and then you can sand it back so that's those tracks we've got some nice um, We'll look at this here. I'm imagining these are parts that are specific just to the F because of how they're presented on a small sprue like this. But I think what we want to highlight here are the weld beads. So running across there. Very nice. No need to um, change or add to them as far as I'm concerned. And then you've got another weld bead running along there as well. Not sure how well the camera's doing picking that up, but it's looking very nice. We've also got uh, the jack here. It's a very nice jack. It's got everything you want to have. Right, now tracks are important. So let's look at the other bits of track. So this sprue has the ice cleats as well, which are here. And I think these go on like every third or fourth link and um, they just help, it, again, it helps the track sl not stop sliding around. I mean, there's there's one there, and then there's one there. So what's that? One, two, three, one, two, three, one. So it's every third track. And that makes it just, you know, just adds to it. It just makes it really interesting, I think. All these um, bits and bobs hanging off it. The uh, the wider um, sections as well of the winter ketten and often you see them bent as well so I'm, I'm gonna try and do that where they're joined just sort of bend them in a little bit so that when you've got that effect like this on the model and they all go around like that they're sort of some are bent in some are bent out you see them broken off um, I'll look at some reference and see how how much that actually happened and then try and um, try and add a bit in but these are the the links so these go around the sprocket and they go around the idler there's a nice sprue there and we've got some uh, other sections there with the links and a couple of repeating tools because this is a repeating sprue so they chuck it on there now I did see on Facebook I think when this kit was announced that someone was saying kit's very good but it's a shame about the A sprue because it's showing um, mould slippage so I thought well I want to check that and it doesn't look any different to any of the other sprues now uh, again look at Panzermeister's video if for a more detail and I'll be uh, lifting his technique and using it in my video but uh, what we're talking about here is that this part, these rods here, foul up on these rods. Because they sort of don't need to be there or it's too much. So the thing you do is you cut these out and then that will glue in nicely. If you don't, you'll, you'll struggle to get the two parts together. 
But check his video out and um, I'll put a link down below and you'll see that, that in more detail. But over here, I mean, it's generic wheel sprue. Um, you've got sprockets, idlers, road wheels, return rollers, and then the uh, swing arms and all that sort of thing, torsion, not torsion bars, the swing arms, and uh, repeating stuff all the way through here. Everything looks absolutely fine, and the tyres say Continental, which is very good indeed. All adds to the detail. Looking at this sprue here, uh, I can't see anything massively different, although I think this is specific to the F, because it has the former for that, um, that sort of cage that goes over the uh, uh, optics. <laughs> so what we've got here is really, really great detail there on the... Um, the side fenders here. Nicely raised. You can hear it there. Extremely well done. Incredibly well done, actually. You actually look at that and think how they managed to mould that as well. Uh, you've got welds all around here on this part of the superstructure, which is very nice. And then we've got the boxes here as well. Welds all the way along. All the way along. Very nice. Look at that really good all those welds on every single mating surface spare wheels a few other bits and bobs all oh, looks very good then we've got sprue m terrible glare i know but that is just another load of um sort of generic parts i think lots of the bolt-on armor plate tools slide molded uh tow cable eyes you can see that's what that means. We've got the one piece tub. Nothing wrong with that. Very sturdy, very nice. Lots of external detail. So some of these parts are dated. The whole tub has 2020 on it. This has 2023. 2023, so it's obviously brand new. Exceptionally well done. I cannot wait to get building this. Um, lovely recessed weld lines all the way around there. All the way around these raised parts as well. Very, very well done. And then lastly, we've got sprue N. This is a 2020 sprue as well. Bit of slide moulding there on the muzzle brake, as I, as I thought it might have been. Very well done. So there we are. Hopefully I didn't uh, waffle on too much there and that was of interest. But that is the Stug Free Alsafe F8 late production from Tacom for their Blitz range. I think it's a very nice looking kit. I'm going to be um, cracking on with this one over the next couple of months to try and get that one built up. I'm going to add some crew. And we're going to try and do a little bit of uh, scene to it. So uh, if you like what you see, let me know down in the um, comments below. And... Um, if you haven't already, do consider subscribing to the channel. That will keep you posted for everything that's coming down the line. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.